love hearing from all of our viewers across the country. And today, we are gonna answer some of our viewer questions. We're very excited about that. As you can see, Larissa is hanging out with Orly, and Kim is standing by as well. Hi, ladies. Hi, guys. Hey. We're gonna get to all of you in just a little bit, but first, I am here, joined in the dining room by Maria and a very special guest. This is Grant, Maria's son. Grant, are you excited to be here? Yeah. Are you gonna help <laughs> us answer the question? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, this question comes from Kristen Nelson in Knoxville, Tennessee. All right, Grant, I hope you have an answer. <laughs> Our family's New Year's resolution is to drink more water. That's a good one, right? I got new water bottles for the kids, oh, but I'd like to personalize them to make them more enticing to drink throughout the day. Do you have any ideas? What do you think, Mom? I think that she's smart for already going to <laughs> DIY for that. And yes, drinking water obviously is so important. I, I try so hard to get the kids to drink as much as they can throughout the day. So here's a great DIY that you can do to customize basically any bottle that you have around. So your new bottles that you got or recycling the bottles that you That's already have around. So we had these just uh, leftover milk bottles at our house, so I thought it'd be a good idea idea that sometimes the juice comes in here and we want to replace it with water. So sure. we have these here and the most important thing for this, Deb, because we're going to be adding things to it, this is Mod Podge right here. So when you're looking for the one on there where it actually says uh, dishwasher safe. So okay. the reason being you want that is so that you could actually utilize these, wash these. So I have some tips for this. I have just some regular paper that you can use, your sort of everyday paper. Great, you right. can get started if you want. You can see here, I started adding it. some stars. Use the construction paper that your kids just have laying around that will absorb it the best and that's what I recommend we have some scrapbook paper and if you use that like we have here it makes it a little bit stiffer but what you want to do is put it on it'll still work if you do the um, scrapbook paper it just makes it a little bit more work I have my little butterfly here make sure you're layering it on thick and then you do this and if you do uh, the kids um, paper it is gonna stick much easier okay and uh, How so long yeah. does it take to dry oh so you can see this one here I started it just maybe 10 minutes ago and you can see it's already starting to dry. I would let it dry completely, and I would actually do another layer on top of it and let it dry 24 hours before washing it. And I know it's dishwasher safe, I would still hand wash it, but the kids will drink so much more water because they they like to own the fact that That's they right. made it themselves. I know. And look, just like this, Grant. How this fun is, is that? This is G. That's adorable. <laughs> well done, Grant. Yep, good job, bud. Can you say Kristen, I hope that helps. Kristen, I hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great way to, to um, you know, it's safe for the environment. Exactly. It's like exactly. recycle and upcycle. What exactly. a great idea. Larissa Orley, what do you guys think of that? Oh, I love it, but I love Grant's little voice, too. I can't. I want to steal him. So cute. I want to take him home with me. I love him so much. Oh Not, no, he's coming home with me. <laughs> I call dibs. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that. And I do love that you, you know, are reusing water bottles yeah. there. Okay, so we have a question for you, Orly. Yeah. Uh, this is from Wednesday. Curvin in Visalia, California. Now she says, Orly, my favorite sweater has a big snag in it and I keep trying to fix it, but ruin it more and more and make the snag even larger. Is there any hope or do I have to throw it out? No, no, you don't have to throw it out. And can I tell you, this is perfect timing for this question because it coming up next, I'm actually gonna be upcycling a sweater. So this is a really great way that a sweater that you thought you were gonna throw out, I will show you how to save it and then I'll show you how to upcycle it I later too. So. This is what happens, right? You have a sweater and you get this big, gnarly snag in it. Now, what I used to do was just try to push it in, but what would happen is it would still kind of work its way out. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a crochet needle. It's just got that little hook on the side and you're going to come in through the backside. And really what you wanna do is kind of find where it looks like that stitch should have been. Oh. Hook it on and hold it tight and twist and you'll pull it in. Oh. Now your stitch is on the inside. Now, this sort of depends on how long your snag is. If it's long enough, you'll just try to tie this right here into a little knot. If it's kind of like this one, which you can see it's sort of tight to tie into a knot, mm -hmm. what I like to do is just that cut scares it me. and now tie it like this. Just because by cutting it in half, it gives you a little bit more freedom to tie that knot. Once you tie the knot, you also can, if you would like, just drop a tiny dot of either Fabri-Tac or clear nail polish, and that will like fuse it, preventing it from being able to come back through the other side. But now it's there and it's not gonna come back through. 
Oh, do you know oh, how know. many cats and dogs have ruined my sweaters? I wish I'd asked you that. I'm here to Good say Good job, Orly. All right. Well, I know that Deb has made her way over to see Kim. What have you got for us? Kim is going to keep us clean. All right, Kim. <laughs> this question comes from Noah Bloomington in Warsaw, Virginia. Hey, Virginia. Hey, yeah. He says, Kim, I've heard that you're supposed to deep clean your mattress periodically for hygiene purposes right. and also to aid in a better night's sleep, but I don't want to use harsh chemicals. What should I use? Such a great question. I have to tell you something, again, just telling you, you know, all about my particular issues, and that is that your, um, your mattress is so important, Deb, because we spend so much of our life on our mattress. That's right. And you are laying with your, your body, your entire body on your mattress, and if there are toxins in there or it's dirty oh, no. or I just recently bought a new all organic mattress and under the canopy if you don't want to do that because it can be pricey I've got a great solution for you okay all you have to do is you want to clean your mattress the first thing to do I did a little bit earlier here at the house and I got my tools baking soda just a little box of baking soda Deb then I found my favorite essential oils it can be any type you want now essential oils are antibacterial you put about 10 drops in the box, tape it really tightly shut and then shake it. And you really wanna shake it to distribute the oil and break up all of the clumps. Then you wanna take the entire box, Deb, and put it over the entire mattress, get your gloves on and rub it in, massage it into your mattress, then leave it on there for an hour and then take your vacuum cleaner huh. and vacuum it all really nice that. and clean. Gets rid of any dust mites, gets rid of any toxins, and it ensures that the baking soda has really gone in there to deep clean. It's gonna be fresh as a daisy. And it's gonna smell so great. Yeah. You say like every six months? Or? Every six months. That's wonderful. And it's literally a box of baking oh soda gosh. and your essential oils. Amazing, Kim, I love that trick. Yeah, I'm gonna do that good tonight. One. Thank you all so much for writing in with all your questions. We really do love answering them. And please keep sending those cards and those messages.